It's time to turn your life challenging moments into life changing messages. Welcome to the Power Lift Stories Podcast, where we are interviewing women whose stories will leave you lifted up, fired up, and fueled up with hope, courage, and inspiration. We want to thank our sponsor, Powerful Journey, who helps women tell their stories, write their books, and building a profitable brand around both. Join the Masterclass or the Speakers Academy at phyllisjenkins.com. That is P-H-Y-L-L-I-S-J-E-N-K-I-N-S dot com. Now here's your host, Phyllis Jenkins. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Power Lift Stories podcast. I'm Phyllis Jenkins, your host, and I am so excited today to have Doris Young with me. And I almost said your maiden name, so let me just say Doris Johnson Young. (laughs) Uh, Doris is a native Texan. She was born in Waco, grew up in Houston, and went to school at Texas Southern University. So everything Texas about Doris, for sure. (laughs) She has been a certified public accountant for 35 years plus. She is married to her husband, Linnell, for over 45 years. They have three sons, one daughter through marriage, and three grandchildren. Wow. I, I, I love the grandchildren. We have three grandchildren as well. So uh, we love, love, love those grandkids. Doris enjoys singing in her church choir, which is New Mount Zion uh, Baptist Church. And she is on the praise team. She enjoys reading. She enjoys doing puzzles. And Doris, you and I have that in common. Love some puzzles. <laughs> The Nun Wilderness Outdoors. You'll have to say a little bit more about that in a minute. (laughs) She enjoys playing tennis, playing cards, traveling, and most of all, spending time with her family. So Doris, if you would just um, tell a little bit more about yourself than that I might have left out. Well, um, I actually graduated. I went to Texas Southern, but I actually graduated from the University of Houston. Okay. And uh, that was an interesting story because I was out of school five years. Uh, I went for my freshman year and then I decided to do other things. And after five years, I decided I didn't want to be a clerk anymore. And so I went back to school. I started at community college. I went to, uh, and from there to Texas Southern and then from Texas Southern, by then working 40 hours a week plus and trying to go to school, it got a little tiring. <laughs> Wow. And so I, I changed schools from Texas Southern University of Houston just to kind of give myself a little push. And I pushed myself out with a bachelor's in accounting. Well, so, congratulations. That is certainly a story right there. Perseverance. Congratulations. Yeah, I, just to, to share with, uh, with anyone that's listening, uh, don't give up. Don't, mm-hmm. don't think that you can't get past difficulty to, to do things that you want to do and things that you know you need to do for yourself. And I got my CPA for me. I got it because I just felt like I needed something more. And um, that CPA, you work for it. You work for it, you go to that exam, there's nobody there but you and your brain. (laughs) And so when I came out of that, I felt so much more accomplished Mm -hmm. and more like I could do things. So I, I would share that with anybody. And I don't care if you got four or five children and, and, and no husband, you can do it. Yeah. If you yeah. put your mind to it and if you make up in your mind that this is what I'm going to do. I was blessed, yeah. my husband, but it's not something that can't be done if you want it bad enough. I love that. I love that. And as we continue with our interview, I want to ask you before you share your story, if you were to give your story a title, what would it be and why? 
Well, when I was thinking about it, I, I read that and um, I think I'll stick with what I, what I sent you. I, I had to learn how, my story is about how I learned to let God take control. Mm. How I learned, because it's been a learning process and sometimes it was hard, sometimes it was easy. And then sometimes it was, I just don't know if I can do this <laughs> because I'm such a control freak. Um, I'm, I'm a fixer. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's, that's what my story would be, how I le learned to let God take control. Well, that's a great uh, lead way right into sharing your story. <laughs> well, um, as we had talked about before, um, with me being the kind of person that I am, a fixer, a person who, who feels like I, sh I should be able to take care of things, I should be able to do things, I should be able to, to, to get people where I want them to be, to, um, particularly with my children. And um, I can't even tell you how many times he's told me, the Lord has told me, I got this. Mm. And I had to learn how to hear that. And it has been a, it's been a journey. My most recent uh, challenge has been with my husband's illness. He uh, had a stroke in December of 2019. And we were rocking along. We were thinking about retiring. We were thinking about doing all of this stuff. And we were trying to get our little finances and everything in order so that when we retire, we would be, you know, good to go. Mm hmm well, it didn't quite work out that way. He, his stroke left him with a condition called aphasia. He didn't have any physical issues. He didn't, wasn't paralyzed or anything. But his memory and everything was affected. Memory, uh, his cognitive skills were affected. And I remember praying before he had the stroke. In fact, several months before he had the stroke, I remember praying, well, it helped me to learn to be encouraging, have more patience with my husband and to be the wife that he wants me to be and that I need to be for him. And, and he answered my prayer. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot tell you that his stroke changed everything mm. about our, how we relate to one another, how we communicate, uh, the things that we have to do it changed how I need it to be because I'm a very fast talker and I, my mind is always going and I'm, I'm thinking about things in a very quick way. And when he was in the hospital, I was his advocate. He, there was nobody else. And so I had to make sure that the doctors did what they were supposed to do. I had to make sure that he was taken care of. And this happened before COVID. And so I was really blessed in that. The Lord fixes everything. Yeah. He fixes everything. Yes, he does. If this has happened when COVID hit in January mm. and February, I would not have been able to stay in the hospital with him. Wow. So I was able to be in the hospital with him. I was able to be in the rehab. Uh, after he left the acute care hospital, he went to the hospital's rehab. And so I was able to be there to stay overnight, to, uh, to make sure his meals were ordered, to, to do things that he could not do anymore. And um, I found myself learning to speak with him in a more patient way, to stop and think about what I'm saying and how I'm saying it. Because one of the other effects of the stroke is that he, his emotions were very on top. He's not, he's not, um, he's a very quiet spirit compared to my go off at a firecracker rate. <laughs> and so, um, one of the things that I had not seen in 45 years is, is my husband cry. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I think I've seen it, maybe I could count it on one hand. Mm -hmm. And so his emotions became very, very surface. And I wasn't used to seeing that with him. And so that, that put me in another place too, because I had to be careful about how I spoke to him, about my tone, because I wouldn't be fussing. I mean, I would just be expressing myself and he would, he would get upset because he thought I was upset. Mm. And I had to really remind my, my, especially my older son, that there were some things that 
you can't say to me right now because it sends me to another place and he doesn't need to hear that. And so I'm in the hospital room with him and he would get really upset if he thought me and my, and my older son were going at each other. Mm-hmm. And so I finally, I just, one day I just had to tell myself, okay, conversation's over, click, and I hung up. Can't do that in front of him. And even now I can't do it. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, the I Lord have to really ask you, work with me. <laughs> I have to ask you, at what point were you reminded of the prayer that you prayed before the stroke? At what point? Yes. Golly, that's a good question. I'm, I'm trying to think of, of it. When we were in the emergency room. Wow, that was quick. Because, because and the, the reason was that when I was on my way home that day, and it was, it was on my brother's birthday, mm. December 11th. I was on my way home and I had sent uh, somebody, oh, um, one of our church members, had, uh, her daughter had passed and I wanted to send a, a, an arrangement. So I sent him a text and I called him and I said, well, have you read the text yet? And he said, well, no, I haven't read it yet. And I said, well, it's been all day. Why haven't you read it? You need to let me know because we need to get this out. And so I'm on the way, way home in the car fussing mm. uh, at him. And so I get home and he's sitting on the sofa. And I said, Lon, did you, did you read the text? And he said, well, no. I said, well, why don't we just read it together? You know, so I sat down next to him and we were going to read it. And he couldn't read the words. Mm-hmm. And I thought at first, I thought, well, maybe the, the writing is too small. And so I enlarged it. He couldn't read the words. And I stood, I remember standing up next to the bar going, boy, you worry me. <laughs> I told him, I said, boy, you worry me. Mm-hmm. Something is not right. Mm-hmm. And that's when, I, and, and when I got on the phone and talk, I talked with a doctor, one of those mid-life doctors, he said, you get into the emergency room now. Mm. And so we got over to the emergency room and he could not tell the receiving nurse his name, what year it was, mm. who the president was, nothing. Wow. And, that, and, that's, uh, and, and as we were sitting in the emergency room and they were going through all the tests and everything, that's when, it, that's when I was reminded of my prayer. Mm. Wow. And, and I don't think I consciously thought about it that way, but I, that's when I was reminded of my prayer mm-hmm. because I had to be very calm and very, I would talk, you know, talking to people, I had to be very calm in front of him. That's not me. I was ready to go up. I was ready to go north on everybody. <laughs> get, get him some help. Y'all need to do something. Yes. You know? Yes. Well, you know, God reveals himself through our life experiences. And so my question to you is, and we've heard some of it, but how has God revealed himself through this experience to Doris? My calm. Mm -hmm. My calm. I could not allow myself to get upset. I, I, God revealed himself in that. The month before Lil's stroke, my house was empty. There were no other people here but us. It was empty and peaceful. In fact, Lon and I both commented on it when everybody was going, well, we're here by ourselves. <laughs> this is nice. There's no yelling. There's no screaming. There's no TVs in every room going off. And so we, we had gotten to this place of truly emptiness. Mm-hmm. And then uh, after he had a stroke, we were in the rehab and Lon and I were talking. He's able to talk to me. He knew who I was before he didn't, but when he got to the rehab, he knew who I was. Right. He, uh, and he and I talked about the fact that God moved everybody out of here because he knew we were going to need some peace mm-hmm. and that I was going to need some peace because I would not have, I, I, and he knows the Lord knows you inside and out. And he yes, knew he does that I would not be able to deal with people coming at me when I'm trying to help him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so he, he, he emptied this house and he emptied it in a positive way. He didn't empty it in a bad way. That's great. So when, when that happened and when we look back on it, we said, Oh my God, he knew what was coming. Mm -hmm. He knew the pandemic was coming, but he put that stroke in between emptying the house and the pandemic so that we could, so that I could take care of him. Mm-hmm. And now with the pandemic, I'm working from home. 
I can take care of him (laughs) and I don't have to deal with the stress of commuting and all of that stuff. I can see him walking through all of this. I promise you every, every step of the way I can see God's hand all over. Well, he loves us just that much that he allows us to, to see his hand guiding us and, and, and to learn those valuable lessons while we're on the, the journey of uh, recovery and uh, just if, if you would just give us a quick update on how your husband is doing what well, he is doing great he uh the aphasia is still a problem because uh he he still if people speak too quickly then he has to slow him down. he has to tell him i'm not understanding you i don't know what you want me to do mm-hmm. um sometimes when i'm talking to him it's had to teach me how to communicate with him differently I was, I would, I'm used to saying, okay, well, if we don't do this, we need to do that. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> and now I've had to go to, okay, well, do you want to do this? Mm. Okay. Do you want to do this? So I've had to break those sentences up. I've had to break those requests up, those commands up so that he's not confusing it. Because most of the time, if I do it too quickly, he'll answer the last part instead of the first part. <laughs> but he, uh, oh, I apologize. But he um, now he he's communicating better. Mm-hmm. Oh, shoot. I couldn't find it soon enough. But okay. anyway, we're 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 gonna keep moving on. It's 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 as I told you at the beginning. It's like we're sitting in our living rooms talking to each other, and so things happen. Robo calls and everything. <laughs> But um, well, anyway, but uh, but what I was saying though was that now with the aphasia, uh, he can't drive. I have to do all the driving right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, the doctors, he's done adaptive driving. He can, um, and if his doctor releases him, he can drive. But I'll be driving <laughs> mm-hmm. because one of the things that they noticed is that when he's driving, his focus doesn't move as quickly as it needs to sometimes mm, yeah. and you know in, in this traffic here you, you gotta you gotta be on it on point and so um i personally for our safety i, I feel better doing the driving mm-hmm. now this is something that the lord changed with me i would get so upset with him because he would drive and he would he would i would get home i've been at work all day and he'd say well where are you gonna take me and i'm like you need to be taking me somewhere <laughs> and what has happened is that God has let me see that it's safer for you to drive. Mm -hmm. So just do it. Mm -hmm. And I'm okay with that. (laughs) But before it was like, why do I have to drive? I've been working all day. I should be (laughs) there. You know, so I'm a fusser. But uh, Uh, it it looks like God is changing that though. (laughs) He's, he's, um, oh, you know, (laughs) (laughs) he's turning that around very much so, but, but it's, but in a good way. Because, mm-hmm. yes. again, I found myself taking more time to read the word. Mm-hmm. I found myself, we pray together more. We, we sit down to meals together. Um, he will do things in the kitchen, but I feel safer if I'm there with him. Mm-hmm. Safer for him because he could still, you know, make a mistake or something. But the other thing, too, is that when you sit down and have a meal with somebody, even if you're not talking, mm-hmm. there's that, there's something about sitting down together, you know, that uh, it just changes things. It does. And so many families have gotten away from that. And um, I, you know, I grew up where we sat down as a family for every meal almost. And so it's good to, to, to see how you come back to being able to sit together and and have a meal together. And um, what what a powerful story you've shared. And I have just one last question that I would like to ask you. Mm -hmm. I want you to imagine that you just stood on a stage and shared your story in front of hundreds and hundreds of women. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and that at the end of your sharing, there was a huge applause 
But now that has ended. The women have all turned and, and walked away to their their vehicles and the curtains have closed and Doris is preparing to leave. What three things do you hope that those women walked away with? I tell you what, I would hope that they would have walked away with learning to listen to God, to really hear his voice, spend that time with him, to, to learn what it is that he wants from each one of them as an individual, his purpose and his plan, because a lot of times God gives us those, those plans and that purpose, but we, we're so busy, mm. slow down and hear him. That's what I've had to do. And that's what I'm finding is getting me through a lot of things just to slow down. Yeah. The other thing is when God tells you to do something, do it. Mm. You may, it may not look like you want it to look. It may not smell like you want it to smell, but do it. Because at the end of the day, at the end of that obedience comes blessing. Mm hmm and if we want God to bless us, we have to hear his voice. We have to talk with him and listen to him and honor him. And the last thing I would say is when the Lord tells you to let something go, let it go. <laughs> Don't be afraid to let the fear of letting something go that's familiar is probably what stops most of us from doing what God wants us to do mm -hmm. because we, um, we feel like, like we can fix it. We feel like we have control over it. We have control over zero nothing. <laughs> we don't control anything in this world. We don't control anything in this life. And what we have to understand is because we don't have control, when the Lord tells you, I've got it, let it go. We've spent a lot of money and we spent a lot of time doing things that the Lord had already told us, I got this. Mm. And I'm talking about in a clear voice right here. I got this. Let it go. I love those points. Absolutely love those points. And I know that our listeners are walking away today with some golden nuggets and that you sharing your story, you courageously sharing your story has really been a blessing and making a difference in the lives of, of, of someone who definitely needed to hear today what you had to say. Now, Doris, before we say goodbye, I would love for you to share your contact information. I know that you have uh, a business and I would like for you to share how they can contact you and become one of your customers as well. Well, um, I started this business um, Oh, quite a bit, of, quite a time ago. Now that I think about it, about 19 <laughs> years ago, I've been a Mary Kay consultant for 19 years. Wow. And I, and actually at the end of October, it'll be 19 years. And a lot of people will say, well, you know, you do you have your pink Cadillac? Do you drive the car? Da, da. It wasn't about that for me. It wasn't about, I love sharing the business with women, mm -hmm. but it wasn't about that. Um, it was about, finding something that I could be passionate about and that I love doing. Mm -hmm. And I enjoy, I really enjoy the skincare classes and everything. My um, website is www.marykay.com forward slash DJ Young. And uh, my email is Doris underscore Young at tx.rr.com. And my phone number, my cell number is 972-375-6813. I have product in inventory and I can order whatever one might want. I have catalogs available. And so if, if somebody wants to get in contact with me, the best way to do it is to register on my website, www.maryk.com forward slash DJ Young. That's and great. Register, and I get I get an email and it'll let me know that somebody new is out there. 
Wonderful. Well, just in case our listeners were driving or didn't have pen and paper, you will be able to go to my website, phyllisjenkins.com, and get all of the information in the show notes. It will give the contact information for Doris Young, and you will be able to connect with her that way. Again, we are so happy that you were with us today. We look forward to our listeners joining us again for another episode next Wednesday. And again, Doris Young, thank you so much for courageously coming forth and sharing your story so that it will impact the lives of others. Thank well, you again. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. You are more than welcome. Thank you for joining us today. If you are interested in being on the show, go to phyllisjenkins.com. You can also sign up for the Powerful Journey Masterclass or the Speakers Academy at phyllisjenkins.com.